Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm basically in the middle of nowhere here in Asheville, North Carolina for the first look media event of this vehicle right here. This is it. This is the all new 2023 Dodge Hornet GT. But before we get into this small size crossover that Dodge is saying is a performance SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Dodge, they got a lot of changes that they're making. Their two best-selling vehicles, the Challenger and the Charger, are going away as we know it. They're gonna wind up in the history books of the auto industry, but what's interesting is now Dodge, what they gotta do is they gotta pivot and they gotta figure out a new way to bring those same characteristics of fun, driving, Mopar or no car enjoyment. Well, guess what? They believe that the Hornet is the answer. They looked at what's selling right now and the largest growing segment is the smaller size crossover SUVs. Now, with this vehicle, you might say, Joe, that's a compact crossover SUV. Others, you might say, it's a subcompact. Well, guess what? You're both right. It kind of falls in between those two sizes and it makes sense because of the research that Dodge has done. Now the big question is, how is it going to sell against the competition? Because there are plenty to choose from. One particular brand that I want to focus on and one particular model is, comes from that Zoom Zoom brand. Who is that? That's going to be Mazda. We're going to look at, is the Hornet GT the better new SUV to buy over a CX-5 Turbo, but we're also even going to talk about the subcompact Mazda, that CX-30 Turbo as well. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our Hornet GT and find out. Right off the bat, the colors. Dodge has such an amazing color palette with some of the coolest names. This is not called just blue, it's called Blue Bayou. Get it? Love how they bring that fun factor even to their color names. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna notice that we have full LED lighting, LED daytime running lamps, and turn signals. And one thing that's interesting is you can see the family resemblance, how this is very similar to what's on the front end of a current model charger. So this is what Dodge is trying to do. They're trying to take some of the DNA from the current muscle cars and bring it into, like I said, this, what they call a performance SUV. Now, on the lower end, I like the way they sculpted the front fascia. The big zonk I got to give them are fake vents. So, not even on the top trims are these vents functional. They could have been air curtains. They could have even housed some LED lighting. Let me know what you prefer this area to be. I know that you think it should be zonked just like I do because it is not functional. But as we come across that front grill area, you see more of that charger resemblance. And I'm gonna show you where. So up top, being the Hornet, they have this like honeycomb grill fashion. So not only can you eat your honeycomb cereal in the morning, but you got your honeycomb grill. We got the iconic Dodge badge there in the center. Our GT trim has the tech package, and this also has the black top package. These are some of the extra packages you can add. Now, we have upcoming an RT performance package set up. Stay tuned for that one. That one is going to be March 22nd. But with this GT, you're getting a forward-facing camera with the tech pack, that mail slot. They call this opening a functional mail slot. No, you're not putting your mail in. What are you putting? You're putting gobs of air, just like on the charger. And then on the lower portion, you have that honeycomb grill area as well. I like the way that they took the lip and just molded it all nicely into that lower bumper area. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, how much ground clearance is there? There's eight inches of ground clearance on the Hornet GT. Now, when we rise up onto the hood, the great news is you're getting some bulge. So the bulge that we find familiar on a cha Challenger is here on the Hornet. Like the way they did it, especially in this beautiful blue, we have functional, not fake, functional heat extractors, and you can see how they really carved into that hood and dropped those gloss black heat extractors in there. Now, as we come around the bend, this is where we're gonna see some unique touches on our particular GT because we have the blacktop package. The blacktop package brings a lot of, guess what? 
black accents. One of those things you're gonna get are these unique abyss wheel wheels. It's like a satin, metallic, gray, black finish to it. You can see in the, in the uh, Carolina sun how it really shines nicely, but these wheels are optional with the black top. It's an 18 inch wheel, 225 on the width, 55 series sidewall, and you got your standard braking. Now the great news is, if you want some extra performance, something you can't do on your CX-5 Turbo, you could do on this Hornet. You could actually get the track pack and that would add Brembo brake calipers. Bring in some extra performance, you could get larger wheels, all sorts of different additions based off of how far you wanna take it. Unlike the CX-5 Turbo where they do have like the carbon edition, which would be a, a great comparison with this one, but it's more show than it is go. Now, one of the things on the GT is that you do have the flat black around the opening. I wish they would paint this, but this is the GT spec. The good news is if you step up to RT, it is painted. But let me know how you feel about it. When you're comparing this to the CX-5, I feel like basically Dodge measured how much black fender vent is around the CX-5 and fender opening and put that exactly on this Hornet. It's almost exactly the same as on the CX-5. Now the CX-30, it comes all the way up to here. So I like it much lower. Let me know how you feel about this setup. Now coming down the side, one of the big ways to see that this has the black top package is our blacked out Hornet. And remember, Dodge does some of the best emblems and badges in the auto industry. We have gloss black on our mirror caps. We have our turn single slim and trim and we have 360 degree cameras because we have the tech package. Color match on the door handles. This one is a pre-production. You will get a sunroof. This one does not have a sunroof because it is a pre-production. You will have a sunroof on the GT. And then down below, you can see the continuation of that flat black side sill extension. If you wanna get painted, you could go RT. Now, when we look at the overall shape, I think one of the things that makes this look a little bit more sportier than the CX-5 is this area right here. Normally the quarter window is in the rear pillar, but if you notice when I open up the rear door, you actually have the rear window comes with it. And look at that body line. I mean, it's like surfs up right into the rear pillar here. You got your gloss black trim, which is part of the black top package and all Hornets are all wheel drive. And that makes sense because guess what? All CX-5s are all wheel drive. So mano e mano on the comparison. Now coming around to the tail end of the business, you have a short stubby roof spoiler, color match shark fin antenna, just like on the CX-5. So this is very similar with that comparison, but I love the way, I do love the way that Mazda does their lighting, but I really love the way that Dodge did the lighting. All of this illuminates across the back we got our blacked out GT badge. And then of course, on the driver's side, we have our blacked out Hornet badge. And then working your way all the way to the bottom, it looks good, but I'm gonna zonk the fact that there's no exhaust finishers whatsoever, where obviously on the CX-5, you would have those exhaust finishers on both sides. But while we go ahead, it's about that time. Let's pop the hood and we could talk horsepower numbers and see, is this the Hornet to buy? All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts, but guess what? Compared to the Mazda, the Mazda has a prop rod. So something extra on the Hornet. Underneath the hood, not the sexiest of engine compartments. And when you compare it to the CX-5 Turbo, you actually have a little bit smaller displacement, but don't let that fool you because guess what? This two liter turbocharged inline four puts out more horsepower, 268 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. Now the CX-5 Turbo produces 252 horsepower from its 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, but it does produce 320 pound-feet of torque. On the Hornet, we have a nine-speed automatic. On the CX-5 Turbo, you get a six-speed automatic. But at the end of the day, the Hornet GT does have an electronic limited slip diff, Zero to 60 with the all wheel drive in 6.5 seconds. Top speed 140 miles per hour. The SUV weighs 3,752 pounds. And then guess what? 21 MPGs in the city, 
29 on the highway, and it could tow up to 2,000 pounds. Now, the fun thing is, compared to the CX-5 Turbo, if you want some other performance goodies with that track pack, you could get the dual stage Kony shocks, and also, like I said, those Brembo brakes. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this up, and hear what it sounds like. Alright guys, we're inside this 2023 Dodge Hornet GT. Now let me preface with some information here. If you are more interested in the RT, which I have that review with full driving coming March 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, that isn't coming out until after the GT, so that means it's model year 2024. But this is a model year 2023, they'll be avail available Later this spring, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I've been looking at compacts, some subcompact, HRVs, CRVs, Tucsons, uh, Sportages, and of course the Mazda products. I've always liked the Mazda, but you know what? My great great granddaddy worked for Dodge, the official Dodge Brothers, and worked on the original Airflow. He wants to know, and I want to know, how much is the MSRP? Well, here's the good news. Starting MSRP on the GT is, believe it or not, $29,000. You spec it to this particular one with the tech package, with the black top package and all the other goodies, you're looking at an MSRP right at $40,000. There is supposed to be a sunroof, but this is a pre-production, so something to think about, but yours will have a sunroof when you get yours later this spring. But let's see how it stacks up to the CX-5 Turbo to the door panels. I like the nice sporty style. No gloss black, semi soft touch up front. We got a little bit of gunmetal metallic satin gray. The switch gear is all flat black. Because it's got the tech package, it's got the Harman Kardon sound package with the aluminum speaker grill covers. We got some red stitching and then you got a pretty good size door pocket there. You could actually get a pulled boar sandwich. Pulled boar, that's like a specialty out here in North Carolina, and a large Mountain Dew because guess what? That is the official state drink of North Carolina. Now going from the door panel to the dash, one thing I'm kind of on the fence on, and I want to get your input, is they have that orange peel finish. Not my favorite. I'm not going to zonk it. I'm going to leave it up to you. Let me know in the comment section if you like this elephant skin orange peel finish but what i do like is how they did the ac vents just a little bit of gloss black i like the way it's got the nice click when you open and close the air vents you got the red stitching and then you got that familiar face but in a little bit different twist we have that 10.25 infotainment system screen it's got the uconnect 5 this is your home screen so you could actually have this open up there's your car. It says my car, that's your car. You could go into your performance pages because guess what? This is a Dodge product, Mopar, no car, right? So you have your technical gauges, you have your accessory gauges, oil temp, transmission temp and whatnot, and even your consumption. And we're not talking about how much food you, con you consumed, we're talking about fuel consumption. And like I said, we've been ripping and roaring through the twisty bits out here. Go back to home, now you could go into your surround camera because we have that tech package, 360, with trajectory, which is really nice. I get out of that. And then to get to the AC controls, it's a little cumbersome. Now, you could do it on the screen, or I'll show you another way, but it's really the hardest part is the seats. You have to actually hit on the screen if you want to turn on your heated seats or ventilated seats. So that's nice that we have ventilated seats and heated seats, which is really great, and a heated steering wheel turn it on and off just by hitting the screen. Like I said, when you're driving, it's a little difficult. And as you can see, I keep pressing it over and over again and it keeps popping back up. I go down the vehicle. We then could go into our controls, adjust your settings, all those different things in that Uconnect 5. Working our way down, we do have our toggle switches for our AC controls. So if you don't want to touch the screen for the AC and it's dual climate. So you make your adjustments 
with the nice toggle switches. We got our start stop button conveniently placed. We're gonna shut off that pesky auto start stop feature. We got a 12 volt for radar detector, USB-C, USB-A, and wireless charging. No flat black, and I like the way they shape this with the silver and the way they have the actual shift lever here with the stitching. This is gonna control that nine speed automatic. Two cup holders. Of course, we have our traditional Dodge key fob. How do I know? Because it says Dodge on it. Flip it around. There's our buttons and whatnot. And then you have this nice padded armrest. I like the position of it. Open it up. Guess what? You could put two Magic 8 Balls in there. So if you are wondering, should I buy a Mazda? Should I buy this Dodge Hornet? Ask the Magic 8 Ball. I've made all my life decisions on asking the Magic 8 Ball and look where I'm at today. So you can keep two of those in there. So if you want to play with your own ball, somebody else could play with their ball. It kind of makes it nice when people have their own balls to play with. But the seats, the leather material, I love the Dodge going on, the stitching, perforated all the way down, decent bolstering, not too crazy. You do have electric assist for the passenger, electric assist for the driver, and technically, there's supposed to be a hole right here because you're supposed to have a sunroof, but this one is a pre-production. Get your butt over here. I wanna show you behind this flat bottom steering wheel in the Dodge Hornet. Hi right, guys, come on into the business end of the Hornet. What's nice is, is you do have those power seat controls, easy to get to, and I'm so glad that they gave us lower lumbar for God's sakes. Inside, this is where it's on the fence, compact, subcompact. It feels about the same space up here as a Mazda CX-5 Turbo. So interesting how they were able to work that out. Steering wheel, this is something you're gonna wanna put your hands on all day long. Like the way they did the leather, flat bottom, you got your sport button all activated by your thumb. Boom, boom, boom. Flat black on all the other switch gear, no paddles. So if you wanna manually shift through the nine speed, you gotta do it with the shifter by taking it and pulling it all the way over and then you go down gears, up gears. So at least they got that direction correct, but there are no paddles. Check out the dash though. This is absolutely stunning and blows the Mazda out of the water. Nice clean graphics. In the center there, you got your navigation. You can then scroll through a cornucopia of information and go back right back to the map. I actually hit my finger too fast. There we go, right back to the map. And then check this out, sport mode, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, look at that. Now we're in full sport mode. That's gonna adjust everything. I love the graphics, but that's gonna adjust how the engine and the transmission behave, steering and throttle sensitivity. But you know what? Let's get in the back seat. We don't have driving impressions today, but I could de definitely talk about some of these functions without talking about the actual driving impressions. Let's get in the back seat and see how impressed we are in this horn. Hi guys, back seat time. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I know you always want me to be honest. Well, guess what? I'm gonna be extra honest. We left the seats exactly where Lori and I were sitting. So you could see how much leg room that I have. It isn't too bad, all things considering. It really isn't. And you know what? I would be nice enough and I would still be comfortable moving my seat up just a little bit. But quite crazy how they package this thing, especially because it is a tad smaller than the CX-5 Turbo. But let's talk about what we got back here. Leather all the way around. I do like that touch. You have great pockets. And this is good, especially if you're gonna come out here to uh, Mr. Thompson's farm down the street. He has this really cool where you can mine for gold and other precious stones right at his farm. So you can keep all your mining tools here because you gotta bring your own. If you show up and you don't have your own tools, you gotta use your hands and that's not gonna work. But we do have a command center back here, AC vents, USB-C, USB-A, and we have a separate pocket so that if you're gonna go panning for gold with one, more than one person, like I said, if you're going to Mr. Thompson's ranch, his farm up the, the street, you gotta bring your own mining equipment. Back here, feels pretty good. Definitely feels sporty. Pull this guy down, mm, mm, mm. Soft as a freaking hot out of the oven honey bun. And that's another thing that Mr. Thompson has is one of the largest collection of honeybees out here. Buy some of his honey. It's super sweet. And on top of that, you do have a pass-through. So if you need to get 
to any of that honeycomb that you bought since you're driving a hornet, you could easily reach back there and munch on that while you're being driven around North Carolina. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to that cargo area because I really want to find out how it stacks up to the Mazda. All right guys, cargo time. Let's see how it stacks up. Hit the button, nice electric assist. Now one thing I have to point out is look how high the entry floor is from the ground. That is quite a bit of distance, much higher than the Mazda, but you get greeted to a pretty good amount of space. 27 cubic feet of space with the seats up. And then of course, we're gonna fold them down for you, but just to give you an idea, it's almost 55 cubic feet of space with the seats now. Now on the driver's side, besides the interior lighting, we do have a 12 volt, which is great, especially when you're out here camping in the middle of Asheville. And then the one zonk, other than how high this rear bumper area is, is to fold down the seats, I gotta go all the way over to the passenger doors. It would be nice to have some handles back here, but what you're gonna do is you're just gonna push on the lever and pull the seats down. It's a 60-40 split. So we got 40% down, here comes the rest. Now you got 100% down, almost totally flat, but it definitely allows you to go make that Costco run. The one thing I do like is that you are getting a spare on the GT. So that's nice because in this world, there's a lot of brands that are not doing that. And I know that you wanna go on that on throttle drive. I wanna take you on throttle, especially in the RT, which is the true top performance model. Well, guess what? It's not a long wait and I promise you it'll be worth it. March 22nd, set your alarm, mark your calendar, get a tattoo on your face of March 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern time, I wanna see you back here, but we gotta wrap it up from North Carolina because I'm about to freeze. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. All right, guys, it's been an amazing time out here in Asheville, North Carolina. I better see you back here March 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern time. You're taking a lunch break at work. I want you back here so that we could go on throttle through the twisty bits, the amazing twisty bits, out here on the Blue Ridge Parkway. But we got to thank everybody at Dodge for inviting us to this event. Let me know what you think so far about the Hornet, especially the GT that we have here with the tech pack and the black top package on this particular SUV. Do you think that this is the better way to go than a Mazda CX-5 Turbo? Or even like I said, the smaller CX-30 Turbo let me know in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rise family. We got to give it up. LG Rady, working it like she always does. She knows what's up. You do too, so show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for being the best. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.